I think the first riff I learned how to play was Motley Crue Looks That Kill. And I thought I was total badass playing that, you know, just the, just that, oops, shit. I already lost my here, headphones. Um, yeah, the, um, just that, dan, 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 you know, I learned that. I mean, I played it like crap. I still play it like crap, but I played it like real crap back then. But I thought it was pretty awesome, you know? And I think, yeah, basically I learned that first. Probably right after that I learned, I think I learned Rocky Like a Hurricane, maybe? And then, um... ACDC's Highway to Hell. Those are my three. So I'll give you three for the price of one this time. The first riff I ever wrote was with um, this band we had called Black Mass. It had Ralph Pimentel ended up playing drums for Old Lady Drivers, oh, wow. and um, it was me on guitar. Most the band was mostly me and him, but then we had this other dude, we used to call Messy Marvin, because he had like the big glasses and stuff, and the blonde hair, and he was he would do vocals for it. He kind of sounded more like um, uh, DRI type style of vocals or whatever, but it was it was pretty, um, it was pretty brutal song. I mean, basically all he did was take the Satanic Bible and just like, you put the you know use the lyrics as a ritual for the black mass and we played this really um you know really cheesy riff but we were really influenced by like merciful fate at that time we like, totally wanted to have that kind of merciful fate uh thing going so yeah it was a song called black mass and um yeah the riff you're probably never gonna hear it Judas Priest, Defenders of the Faith. That was an amazing show. Holy fuck. Uh, it was a dream come true for me. I was a super big Priest fan, so it was a it was a dream come true to see them, those people alive on stage. It's a different world back then, you know? Because only, the only other times I'd seen them is either in magazines, back of the album cover, or maybe, you know, I think they just released a video for Free Wheel Burning, and, you know, I seen a couple of those, like Hot Rockin' and... Um, whatever they played on MTV, but just to see him live in person, I was just like, it was a dream come true for me, you know? I'd have to say the Canary Islands. Um, you wouldn't even think there's like a metal scene on the Canary Islands. Most people don't even know where it's at, but <laughs> yeah. we played it, it was like outside of, it's, it was a part of a, a tour we were doing just of Spain, and it's a province of old island that's owned by Spain. They flew us out there for a show, and anyway, yeah, the crowd was just insane. I mean, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was as much the fact that we were playing, but the fact that there was just death metal playing, people were just so excited. that There, there was literally, literally a line on stage to do stage dives. I mean, it was like, we're trying to play, and there's like a line on stage. There's, there's a video of it um, somewhere out there, of that show it's just funny because once people start stage diving just like you know there's more people on the stage just waiting to stage dive and they can't all stage dive at the same time you know it's just it was really funny so that, that's one of the craziest another one i'd have to say offhand was some of the old shows used to play in mexico back in um like the 90s there those people are crazy fucks and um Another one that stands out is the Chili Metal Fest we played in uh, 98. That was, uh, man, that was one crazy crowd, too. I mean, that, that was insane. I mean, we, it was a pretty stacked bill with Death and Cannibal Corpse also on it. But, man, the crowd was just insane. I mean, not, not just during our set, but just the whole thing. I mean, they were shooting off... Um, Roman candles and stuff inside of the building at the at the stage and stuff and throwing toilet paper everywhere. People stage diving off the balcony. So that was pretty crazy too, you know. I ordered the Whoppers Taste Good demo and um 
that you know they they wrote me back and sent me sent me their demo that was one of the earliest ones i think um fuck maybe uh scott helig from total fresh magazine was one of the early like le people that i sent out to because i i remember when i first met henry veggie and he showed me a bunch of fanzines and i didn't really know about like underground fanzines before that so he gave me a bunch of letters and yeah, I, I want to say Scott Healing was one of the first people to write me back because he was from Philadelphia. Yeah, it had to have been because Whoppers Taste Good was in um, that issue of um, Total Fresh, which his magazine was. So the Avenging Diabolic Usually, if a song's about killing posers, I kind of like it, so it's it's kind of tough to say. But uh, I'll go with one of the one of the earliest ones that I remember really um, digging was a song by uh, was it Thrust? I think it was uh, Posers Will Die. It was on a um, no, it was, yeah, it was on a um, one of those. It wasn't one of those Metal Massacre albums, but it was like. They did another comp album or something like that, and it had Posers Will Die on it. That was pretty good. And any Man of War song that has, talks about Posers dying is always a fun one, especially when it's like a really like Poser kind of song and they're talking about killing Posers. That makes it even better, you know?